switch gears and types of switch gears. What is meant by a switch gear? In general, in our classrooms or in our houses, if you want a light, you just put on the switch that means lamp glows and we want a fan circulation. You just put on the switch, then fan rotates. You want a cool air, you just put on the switch, cool air comes from the air circulator. So what switch is doing here? The switch is either it is making an electrical circuit or it is a closing an electrical circuit. So when you put on the switch, lamp glows. When you do not put on the switch, lamp does not glow. That means the switch is it is making a circuit, it is breaking a circuit. Today we will discuss about the types of switch gears. The types of switch gears are air brake switches, knife switches, isolators, circuit breakers. So all these four are doing switching operations only. This is a switch which is used in household purpose. This switch is a flush type of switch. It has got two terminals. So one terminal is to receive the electric supply and another terminal is to give the supply to an apparatus. So when you close the switch, that means you just on the switch, that means the circuit is closed from this terminal to this terminal, therefore the lamp glows. So what it is doing? It is making the circuit. Similarly, if you close the switch, that means the lamp does not glow. What it is doing? It is breaking in a circuit, that is why the lamp does not glow. So here what it is doing? It is making in a circuit, it is breaking in a circuit. So similar switches are used in substations, but they are called as different names like air brake switches, knife switches, isolators and circuit breaker. All these devices are doing same purpose as a switch because of uh, they are using a different means at different uh, uh, places they have been named uh, in these four names. So, I will give you a brief example how switch is operating. Now, this is an, a closed electrical circuit. This is a lamp is connected to an, a battery source of supplying V volts. So, when it is connected to a source, then naturally current flows and current flows and uh, stops at the switching point and uh, current does not flow into the lamp because switch is open. Therefore, the lamp does not glow because switch is open. When switch opens, lamp does not glow. So here the switch is using as a to break the circuit. Since it is a break, the lamp does not glow. You see the next figure. So in this figure, the switch is closed here. So you can see the current is flowing from the switch to the lamp, therefore from the lamp again back to the supply. So therefore, now the circuit is closed, hence this lamp glows. So with this explanation, we can understand a switch is a device, either it make or break an electrical circuit. If switch is closed, electrical devices works. If switch is not closed, electrical device not devices not functions. What is meant by an air brake switch? Now we have learned about the know about the four types of switches out of this. What is meant by an air brake switch? This air brake switch also called AB switch. If we go back to our earlier classes, so air brake switch, if you go back to our earlier classes, these AB switches we have studied in estimating class. So in pole mounted substations, we have studied air brake switch. What it is doing air brake switch in pole mounted substations? To receive the power to the substation, we used to close the air brake switch and to switch on the pole mounted substation, we used to isolate the air brake switch. So here air brake switch is doing the purpose of making uh, receiving the power 
to the substation and sending the power to the substation. So, it is isolating and it is making in a circuit. And air brake switches are operated under full load conditions. They can be operated under full load conditions, but they are designed for low currents and manually operated. AP switches are used in pole mounted substations. So, air brake switches are used in pole mounted substations. You know pole mounted substations are nothing but a two pole mounted two poles mounted substation where it receives the power and it sends the power. So, whenever the power is receiving we have to make on the air brake switch and whenever we want to send out the power. So, we have to make we have to isolate the power we have to make off the air brake switch. So, already we have drawn this uh, air brake switch figures in our earlier classes we know the function of air brake switches. So, basically air brake switches are used for the operation of full load voltages, but they are designed for very less currents. So, I have given some figures for air brake switches, single brake air brake switches. In air brake switches, there are two types single brake air brake switch and double brake AB switch that is air brake switch. In single brake air brake switch, you can see here there are two post type of insulators. These are the insulators made of porcelain item for giving a high dielectric strength or high insulating strength. And these two insulators are mounted on the IC, uh, channels. These channels are made of MS channels. And overall, this AB switch is mounted on a pole mounted substations. And uh, you can see this this is the connecting rod between one insulator to the other insulator, other insulator, and we receive the power to the one of the insulator. And on, on top of the insulator, you will have a metallic contact and uh, another insulators also will have a metallic contact. To connect these two metallic contacts, there is an operating rod. So, you give the supply to the one of the metallic uh, uh, terminal and uh, when the operating rod is closed in between these two, then the supply goes from one rod to another rod and from here it is connected to a load part. And uh, this is a single pole. Single pole means it will have a two insulators. And uh, in three phase system in HT lines, three poles will be there. Like this, three more, uh, three set, uh, set of three insulate, three uh, insulators will be there. And finally, they are connected through a crank rod system. And when, once we operate the crank, then uh, at a time, all three uh, all three operating rods will be open. All three insulating rods will be closed. So, th this is called single break AB switch. So, instead of this if you see the back figure. So, here three post type of insulators are there and uh, the either side of the insulators are fixed they cannot they are not movable, but whereas the center insulator it is a movable and to this center insulator on top connecting rod will be there. So, once this rod is operated by the handle system which is connected to the bottom of the bottom and once that uh, bottom of the handle is operated immediately this center insulator rotates in at axis about uh, 90 degrees. Therefore, the connecting rod or operating rod which connects between the two either side of the insulator and uh, supply will be uh, taken from either end of the insulators. So, therefore, this insulator by using this insulator we can take two supplies that is from here one supply and uh, from here another supply. So, we can take one, one supply as well as we can take both the supplies by operating the center brake type of air brake switches. Next is what is meant by a knife switch. So, regarding the knife switch you all seen in our classrooms in our electrical laboratory. So, before starting the electrical devices. We used to run the electrical devices by closing the knife switch. So, what is meant by a knife switch? Here also knife switch can be operated under no load conditions and they can be used for either to make or break an electrical circuit. So, 
this is a knife switch we all we all seen in our electrical laboratories and this switch mostly used only in electrical laboratories but less used for industrial purpose because they doesn't have any making and breaking capacity so you are seeing this there are three terminals these three terminals in shape as there looks like a knife that is why it has been named as the knife switch knife switch and uh, this switch is made of copper rods these three strips are made of copper rods and these strips finally connected to a, a wooden this is made of hylum sheet so to have an insulating part so these three conducting parts because it is made of copper they are conducting parts they are connected to a hylum sheet which doesn't allow in any current into it so this hylum sheet is finally connected to an a pivot system so with this pivot we can operate either for closing or opening the knife switch so you can see here there are three leads so they are flexible now with this knife switch what three more leads will be coming so to receive the electrical power and uh, once you close this switch then the power uh, the electric current passes from these three terminals from these three terminals current uh, will be coming to these three u type of uh, terminals from this u type of terminal it will be connected to an electric motor or an electric device that means the current comes to the u shape type of clamps this will go and inserted into the u shape clamps from the u shape clamps the current will be passed to the three strips from the three strips the current goes and enter into the electric motor therefore motor runs so now you can see here these uh, knives are made of copper because copper is a good conducting material and it allows the flow of current very easily into it but because this is a insulating item pivot so we can operate this switch by closing and opening this so we all might have seen in our electrical labs the purpose of knife switch and uh, where this will be used but this doesn't have any breaking and making capacity what is meant by making and breaking capacity so making capacity means under the fault conditions also we must able to open the switch can we open the switch we cannot open the switch once the switch is open immediately the device will burnt so therefore the knife switches are used for only under low currents and they are manually operated so these air uh, knife switches knife switch is used to make or break an electrical circuit but they are designed for low voltage and manually operated all our electrical labs the voltage range is only 440 volts so up to 440 volts only these knife switches can be used we, beyond the 440 volts we cannot use can we use this uh, knife switch in uh, substations no we cannot use why because they doesn't have any making and breaking capacity therefore they are only just isolating switches under low voltages the fault currents also very less therefore they will be used restricted for only low voltage systems what is meant by an isolator in general all the substations or all the incoming places we used to incorporate an isolator isolator is doing is a very hurt in the substations so whenever we want to switch off the substation supply we have to operate the isolator or if we want to give the supply to a consumer we want to operate the isolator so the isolator are you are nothing but a disconnecting switches or they can also be a making they can make the connections they can disconnect the connections so in general these isolators also doesn't have any making or breaking capacity so i told you making capacity means under faulty conditions also so we can able to open the switch which is not possible in isolator and we can in whenever the fault current flows the isolator must open automatically that is not possible so manually we have to operate the isolator and manually 
we have to disconnect, we, we have to make the isolator. So, isolator, more isolators means more safety in a switching yards. So, before the, whenever we want to receive the supply, we used to open the, we used to close the isolator. Once you close the isolator, the supply comes. When you want to disconnect it, if you disconnect it, the supply goes. So, what it is doing? It is making the circuit, it is breaking the electrical circuit. Let us see their definition. What is meant by an isolators? Isolators which operate under no load or no current conditions. Isolators can be called as disconnecting switches. They are just disconnecting switches since they are designed to make or break the electrical circuit. So, I told you, I have given an example for an, a switch, a small switch. What small switch is doing? It is making an electrical circuit, it is dis disconnecting an electrical circuit. The isolator also does same purpose, it makes an electrical circuit, it breaks an electrical circuit, but they are used for the higher voltages, generally they are used for 11 kV to 220 kV volts. So, wherever 11 kV to 220 kV voltages are available, that is in substations, these isolators are used because because they are used in substation, they have been named as isolator and isolators are doing the same purpose as a switch does, uh, does in low voltage purpose. Types of isolators. So, based on number of poles, the isolators are classified into single pole isolators, triple pole isolators and three pole isolators. So, what does it mean by single pole isolator, triple pole isolator and three pole isolator? Single pole isolator means if the isolator is connected for one phase supply, then we can say it is single phase supply. If the isolator is connected for a through two phase supply, that means it receives either two phase or it can be connected to a single phase, one phase and neutral, then we can say it is a double pole isolator. What is meant by a triple pole isolator? That means all three phases should be connected to an isolator, then we can say it is a three pole isolator. In three pole isolators, all the poles will be operated simultaneously, then all the three phases uh, can be opened or closed simultaneously, then we can say three pole isolator. Let us see one example of three pole isolator, how the three pole isolators will be. So, this is the triple pole switch phase unit isolator. So, we all seen in our electrical lab, a box will be there, inside the box there will be a three fuses, one, two and three. And these three fuses, below the these three fuses, you will be having a switching or device. This is a switching devices, three switches will be there, one, two, three. And these three switches are interlinked with a common rod and this common rod is directly connected to an handle system. So, once we operate this handle, these three switches combinedly they will be closed and once we put down the handle, combinedly these three switches can be operated, uh, can be open. You know, when these uh, three phases are connected to a three phase load, so the switch is, you are be getting a three phase supply, that is red phase, yellow phase, bl blue phase. So, three phase supply we are receiving and once we put on the handle, switch will be closed Therefore, three phase supply receives to the load and on load side the equipment is connected, the equipment runs. So, once we open the handle, all the three switches should be simultaneously open. When we close the handle, all three should be simultaneously open. If three are not simultaneously open, what happens you know? Suppose only these two are closed. If these two are closed, only these two are closed this is not open, this is open. So, that means you will be getting a two phase supply. So, by giving the two phase supply in a three phase motor, you know the effect. What happens? The three phase motor burnt because 
a motor cannot run on a two phase system. So, therefore, it is highly necessary to operate all three phases simultaneously. Let us see what are the types of uh, insulators based on the service. So, based on the service, the isolators are defined into two types. One is indoor isolators, the other one is outdoor isolator. What is meant by an indoor isolator? The isolator, the indoor isolator means if the isolators are mounted indoors the building, inside the building, they are not exposed to the atmosphere, then we can say it is an indoor isolators. What is meant by an outdoor isolator? If the isolators are mounted on the outdoor, then we can say it is outdoor insulator. So, it does not mean that if the isolator is uh, mounted in the indoor, it is a indoor. If it is mounted on the outdoor, it is outdoor. No. For outdoor insulator, isolators, a specific design is required because it is exposed to the atmosphere. It should be exposed to the rains. It is exposed to the sun. Therefore, a specific design is required for the outdoor insulators. Therefore, outdoor insulators are different and indoor isolators are different. What is meant by an earthing isolator? Earthing isolator is connected between the line to the ground. What is meant by an isolator? What is meant by an earthing isolator? We have seen isolators are disconnecting switches or it can make the connections. But earthing isolators are different mean. Earthing isolators are whatever the voltage, trapped voltages are there in the line after opening the main isolator, that trapped voltage supposed to be bypassed to the ground. What is meant by a trapped voltage? So, due to the capacitive effect, capacitance effect of the ground, always the charged voltage will be existing in the transmission or distribution line. And these charged voltage are exist in the line. When you open the main isolator, so that means the supply is disconnected. Those supply is disconnected, the charged voltage will exist in the transmission line. And uh, before doing the maintenance, this charged voltage supposed to be bypassed to the ground. How they will be bypassed? They will be bypassed through the earthing isolator. So, now you are clear what is meant by an earthing isolator. Earthing isolator is used to bypass the trapped voltage which are existing in the line to the ground. If they are not bypassed, what happens? So, when a person climbs up for maintenance, these trapped voltages also very severe because they are higher voltages. In higher voltages, the trapped voltages also play a very significant role. Therefore, it is highly needed to bypass the trapped voltage to the ground. So, why there is a interlocking between the main isolator and earthing isolator. For maintenance purpose, the first main isolator should be open. Once your main isolator is open, that means the supply is disconnected, then the earth isolator must be closed. Once you close the earth isolator, the trapped voltage or existing voltage which are available in the line should be bypassed to the ground because the earth isolator is closed. Let us see the definition of earthing isolator. Earthing isolators are connected between line conductor and earth. Normally, it is open. Whenever main isolator opens, earth isolator closes so as to discharge the trapped voltage on the line. So, we will see more about the earth isolator by seeing this figure. Now, this is a transmission line, a single line diagram has been shown like this, three lines will be there and uh, this is the main isolator. When main isolator is closed, the supply will be coming from the incoming and goes to the outgoing which is connected to an equipment or load. And you can see these blue lines, this is the earth isolator, this is the earth isolator. Now, this earth isolator is open whereas, this main isolator is closed. So, current go comes and passes through the main isolator to the equipment and current also comes, but it stops here because the earth isolator is open. 
So, we are not supposed to close because our purpose is the current should go to the equipment not come back to the ground. So, here when main isolator is closed the earth isolator supposed to be open and see the, the second figure. Now, here the current is passes, but it stops here because main isolator is open here. So, when the main isolator is open that means the supply is disconnected equipment will not run. So, why we open this earth main isolator? for maintenance purpose or if any fault exists on the load side. Now, you can see here, so when the line is open, but in this line there is always some voltage exist because of capacitance effect. Because of capacitance effect, the lines are charged. So, this voltage will be bypassed to the earth isolator because earth isolator is closed here. So, now you can see this trapped voltages passes through the earth isolator to the ground. Now, what earth isolator is doing? Whatever the voltages are existing after opening the main isolator, that voltages should be bypassed to the ground. If it is not bypassed, then it leads to a severe shocks to a person who is doing maintenance on this line. So, there is nowadays in a modern equipment system, this main isolator and earth isolators are interlocked. What is meant by an interlocked? One is open, the other should be closed. So, here when main isolator is open, automatically earth isolator should be closed, you need not open. So, automatically it closes and whenever the earth isolator opens, automatically this main isolator closes. This interlocking facility is available in modern equipments. Now, let us see brief discussion about the working of an isolator. So, isolators are used for voltages of the order of 11 kV to 220 kV. They are used from 11 kV to 220 kV. Isolators are classified into single pole, double pole, triple pole. The triple pole isolator has three identical poles mounted on the base frame. Let us see more with the figure. Now, this is a single break isolator. In isolator, single break isolator or center break isolator, both types are available. Here, let us see the example for single break isolator. This single break isolator, I have shown only for single pole. So, in single pole isolator, it has got two identical poles. So, this is the two identical insulators. This is insulator 1, this is insulator 2. This insulator stacks, this is the stack of insulators. So, many insulators, small, small insulators are mounted on this. That is why it is named as stack. So, this insulator stack is mounted on the bearing. So, that it can be rotated vertically about 90 degrees. Similarly, this insulator also mounted on bearing. Therefore, this also can be rotated about 90 degrees and this whole insulators are mounted on the frame. This is steel frame and this steel frame in turn mounted on the poles that is MS poles or I section poles. Now, this insulator one is rotating at anti clockwise direction, the other insulator rotates at clockwise direction. That means, the rotation will be opposite to each other. Once one rotates clockwise, the other rotates anti clockwise direction. To this insulator, there is a contact arm this is the contact arm, U shaped contact arm, the other one also U shaped, both are inserted each together. So, these contact arms are made of copper or aluminum because they are a conducting paths and these contact arms are in turn connected to a terminal. So, this terminal is connected to a supply, the other insulator terminal is connected to an outgoing system. So, that means, so, th this is connected to an equipment or in a device, the other one is connected to an supply. So, once you give the supply to this, the supply comes through the terminal and goes through the contact arm and it finally goes to the equipment. So, how this operating or contact arm works? So, this is actually single pole like this, a set of three poles will be there. In three poles, six insulator comes. In single pole, two insulator comes. And uh, all these three poles are interlocked with a common handle system. 
once you operate the common hind wheel that means you open the hind wheel so this contact arms are separated i told you this is rotating clockwise and this insulator rotates anti clockwise direction so once you operate the hind wheel here the main isolator takes place so isolation takes place at the center so because it is isolating the supply so once it isolates the supply the equipment is disconnected then we can say this insulators are uh, called uh, this uh, uh, switches are called as isolators because they are isolating the electric supply once isolates then the device is separated from the supply so description about this each pole comprises two insulators i shown in the figure each pole comprises two insulator stacks of post type insulators the insulator stack is mounted on a bearing and the whole stack can be rotated about its axis through about 90 degrees the arrangement is such that one stack swings clockwise and at the same time the other swings counter clockwise the contact arms swings is horizontal plane and the isolation takes place at the center as shown in the figure always the isolation takes place only at the center because contact arms are mounted in between the two isolator pole isolators and once you pull the handle the isolation takes place in between the contact arms in three poles the three poles of the isolator are interlocked and a common operating mechanism is provided so if all three if all three poles are simultaneously it should be operated once it is simultaneously operated then all three poles can be opened at a time and all three poles can be closed at a time so that the equipment will be damaged now let us see what is meant by a circuit breaker in general in all our um, new modern system instead of using the knife switches air brake switches isolators we are going for an a circuit breaker in a circuit breaker we have a multiple advantages what are the advantages the advantages are as far as we cons uh, we have learned about the different types of isolator what they are doing just they are disconnecting the supply but a circuit breaker it can disconnect the supply and uh, either manually or automatically so a circuit breaker also will have a some protective devices what are the protective devices circuit breaker can be operated under all load condition what is mean by all load conditions all load condition means it can be operated under full load conditions it can be operated under no load conditions it can be operated even under fault conditions even short circuit conditions also the circuit breaker can be operated how it can be operated under short circuit conditions because they are designed for a breaking capacity and making capacity what is meant by making capacity all the circuit breakers are designed for a more and more short circuit kilo amps so if the fault exists the fault current will be heavy than normal current under the fault conditions also circuit breaker can break the circuit and what is meant by the making circuit so during by knowing or unknowing sometimes we operate the circuit breaker in our houses we see suppose a lamp there is a short circuit or there is a fault in the line and immediately circuit breaker trips once trips but unknowingly again we can make the circuit breaker if we make on the circuit breaker also doesn't happen again the circuit breaker will trip but equipment will not be damaged so that means during the faulty conditions also circuit breaker can make and break the circuit now the circuit breaker can make or break the electrical circuit manually can be operated at all loads that is no load full load and short circuit conditions if fault occurs circuit breaker automatically disconnects the circuit let us see the schematic diagram of the circuit breaker this is the schematic diagram of the circuit breaker so in circuit breaker you will be having a two contacts this is the fixed contacts bottom one this is the moving contact and this moving contact moves into the sliding contact this red one is the sliding contact 
and this moving contact it is connected to a load system that is out means it is load system and a fixed contact is connected to a supply and one end of the moving contact it is connected to a handle this handle is interlocked with the automatic mechanism system an automatic mechanism system will be there in this and to this moving contact the current transformer is connected the current transformer secondary end of the current transformer is connected to the trip coil system during normal operation of the circuit breaker the fixed contact and moving contact closed each other therefore the supply current comes to the fixed contact and goes to the moving contact to the equipment so under these condition a normal emf will be induced in the current transformer because normal current flows this normal emf is not sufficient to energize the trip coil the trip coil will not be energized during the normal condition under normal condition fixed contact and moving contact will be close together whenever the fault exist on the load side the fault current will be heavy so that heavy fault current flows and abnormally induced emf will be induced in the primary of ct and proportionate emf induces in the secondary ct and therefore this emf is sufficient to energize the trip coil so under abnormal condition the trip coil energizes once it energizes it pulls the handle once it pulls the handle automatically the handle will be moved once handle is moved means the moving contact is separated from the fixed contact now these two are earlier contact each other once the handle is moved due to the energization of trip coil so once the handle is moved then the moving contact is separated once it is separated that means isolation takes place between the fixed contact and moving contact and the arc establishes and this arc establishes in a high dielectric strength here this is filled with an oil or vacuum sometimes some type of gases therefore the arc will be quenched here so that means during the faulty conditions abnormal emf induces and trip coil energizes once trip coil energizes handle will be pulled once handle is pulled moving contact is separated from the fixed contact and isolation takes place thus the circuit breaker will operate this circuit breaker is shown only for a single pole principle of a circuit breaker a circuit breaker mainly consists of a fixed contact and a sliding contact into which moves a moving contact the end of the moving contact is attached to a handle which can be manually operated or automatically it can be operated under normal working condition the emf induced in the secondary winding of the ct is not sufficient to energize the trip coil for operation but under faulty condition abnormal current flows in the primary of ct induces sufficient emf in the secondary circuit to energize the trip coil so as to release the handle hence the circuit is disconnected so the circuit breaker operates only under fault condition under faulty condition abnormal current flows then trip coil energizes therefore it releases the handle and the circuit is disconnected now this is the circuit breaker this is a miniature circuit breaker which is used for household or industrial purpose to make uh, on and off for the electric motors or electric lamps and this circuit breaker is having a on off switch and generally the switch is kept on during the uh, equipment uh, on conditions and whenever the fault comes automatically the switch falls down we need not again open the we need not close the switch automatically the switch opens so this circuit breaker are used for the lighting as well as electric motors purpose what are the types of circuit breakers the types of circuit breakers are oil circuit breakers 
that is again oil circuit breakers are classified to bulk oil circuit breakers called BOCB, minimum oil circuit breakers called MOCB and the circuit breakers are further classified into air blast circuit breakers that is ABCB and air blast circuit breakers are classified into axial blast type, cross blast type and radial blast type. The third one is sulfur hexafluoride circuit breakers, SF6 circuit breakers and the last one is vacuum circuit breakers, VCB. So, what is meant by a circuit breaker? Circuit breaker can make or break the circuit under all load conditions. During the abnormal conditions also circuit breaker can operate. But if the breaking or making occurs in a oil, then we can say they are the oil circuit breaker. If the making and breaking occurs in a vacuum, it is a vacuum circuit breaker. If the make, uh, making and breaking occurs in a sulfur hexafluoride type of gas, then we can say it is SF6 circuit breakers. Now, here you can see the different types of uh, circuit breakers. So, this is a three pole circuit breaker, I have shown you single phase circuit breaker, it has got three poles, one, two, three. Air brake, air brake switches are used. Air brake switches are used for uh, pole mounted substations. Now, three poles are there here, you will be getting three incoming and the others are three outgoing. This is a tri triple pole MCB, this is double pole MCB used for single phase supply or two phase supply and this is single pole supply. Now, we already learned about the different type of switch gears. Let us have some question uh, answer sessions. So, what is the sequence of operation of isolator, circuit breaker and earth switch? The sequence operation of isolator, circuit breaker and earth switch. Hello? 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 Yes. Yeah, earth switch opens, isolator Hello. of yes. Yes. Hello. Yes. What is the function of trip circuit? The, the function of trip circuit is to trip the electrical circuit and it is uh, used in the circuit breaker connection. Earth switch opens, isolator opens, circuit breaker opens. Normally, first we should not open the switch, isolator also should not be opened, circuit breaker should not be opened after opening these two. The second is earth switch closes, isolator opens, circuit breaker opens. Again, this is also not correct. C, circuit breaker opens. Yes, circuit breaker can be open all load conditions. Therefore, first we have to open this. Then, isolator opens. Next is isolator opens. Next, earth switch closes. D, isolator opens, earth switch closes, circuit breaker opens. So, generally, always the first circuit breaker must be open. Then, isolator should be open. Then, earth isolator should be open. So, out of this A, B, C, D, the C is the correct answer. Why switch gear installation is needed in a circuit breaker? To receive the electrical power, yes, it is correct. It is switch gear installation is needed to receive the electrical power. To distribute the electrical power, yes, this is also correct. To receive and store the electrical power, yes, to receive, but it cannot store, electrical power cannot be stored. To receive and distribute the electrical power, yes, switch gear receives the electrical power and distribute the electrical power. Therefore, the D is the correct. What type of oil will be used in oil circuit breaker? The generally, the oil will be used in the circuit breaker is to have a good dielectric strength and to give more coolness because lot of heat effects will be developed during the arcings. And the only uh, you can see the answer, what type of oil will be used in oil circuit breaker? A, diesel oil. No, diesel oil cannot be used because it is a flammable oil. B, castor oil, it is also flammable oil. C, yes, this is a insulating oil. Synthetic oil, no, synthetic oils also is a flammable oil. So, during the arcings only, we have to use the non-flammable oil and it should also have dielectric strength. Out of these four, transformer oil will have a high dielectric strength and non-flammable oil. Therefore, in oil circuit breakers, transformer oil will be used. 
So, isolators are used mainly for providing. So, I should told you isolators are nothing but a disconnecting switches for maintenance the isolators are mainly used. So, what we have to fill up in the dash for maintenance isolators are used. How many post insulators used per phase in the isolator? How many post insulators used per phase in the isolator? I told you per phase A 1, B 2, C 3, D 4, which is correct? I think 2 is correct because per pole 2 insulators will be coming either side post type of insulators. So, the B is correct. The switch gear, the switch that is operated only under no load conditions. Is it AB switch? AB switch I told you it is operated under full load conditions. Aisle circuit breaker, it is operated all load conditions. Air blast circuit breaker, it is only operated under full load conditions. Isolator, yes, isolator can be operated only under no load conditions. So, we will have a brief summary about the types of switch gears. The types of switch gears are air brake switches. Air brake switches are used for under full load condition, they are designed for low voltages. And knife switches, knife switches are disconnecting switches, they are used only for small voltage purpose, only in electrical labs or some industrial purpose. They do not have any making capacity and breaking capacity. Isolators, isolators play important role in isolation of the equipments. Isolators are used in all the substations and all industrial purposes. Isolators are single pole, double pole and triple pole. Mostly in all the substation, triple pole isolators will be used. In isolators are used from 11 kV to 220 kV and uh, I, for switching switch in switch yards for switching purpose isolators will be used. The last one is circuit breakers. Circuit breakers will have a manually operated, but automatically disconnect the circuit. It can be operated under all load conditions that is a no load, full load, even abnormal load conditions also. Abnormal means faulty conditions. Circuit breakers will have a making capacity and breaking capacity. So, we will see the, about the type of circuit breakers in the next class.